Chris. Chris, this is for you. But you've been through a lot of shit struggles, and I know it. I'm gonna play it before you go on because this is almost like a blessing is gonna bless you. Don't forget, prayer is the most powerful thing you can do. I'm gonna shut up. Your struggles, listen. Your struggles are what's gonna make you into who you are. Welcome your struggles. Without your struggles, you're nobody. Without your struggles, you wouldn't be you. Your struggles are God's way of saying you're mine. I've chosen you for something great. And only you, because of your passion. And because of those difficult times, that's being used to mold and make you into who I need to do my great works. And to educate, enlighten, and expose the evil against my people. And because of your struggles, I will bring those to you to help, comfort, and guide, accompany, and share. And because of your struggles, I'll bring those that have struggled and those that also have struggles to you. I've chosen you to do and become the person I need to free my people. Never ever think of giving up on yourself. I have placed the dream within your heart to become and be who I need. I have loved you unconditionally. I will continue to love you unconditionally. As you share the love you have unconditionally, I have seen the way you are. I know who you are. Those around you are chosen to be around you. I've chosen them specifically to walk beside you, walk with you hand in hand, to help you see who you are. The love I have for you is more than I have for those evil people. Love them, forgive them. That's the way you go. I have given you these struggles and place these struggles in your life for you to grow and become great. Without them, you're nobody. Cherish them, welcome them, and learn how to live with them day by day. And remember that you are special. The chosen. I've chosen you. Oh my gosh, I'm almost overwhelmed from that. Thank you so much, that's so beautiful. Mr. Man! <laughs> Hello, Mississauga. So the GTA has been my home for my entire life, and everybody, just like we were, t this was talking about, knows the struggle of the last three years. And the smart ones of us know that the struggle isn't over, but they know that we have a very unique opportunity right now to totally change the direction that this country is headed. There has not been an opportunity like this since the start of this pandemic and the start of all this crap where in so little time, with the help of everybody around us, we can affect so much change and so much positive change for our children's future and for our country. I had never, ever thought that I would be running for anything in politics. Never in my life. But the universe dropped this into my lap. And Toronto is one of the most unique cities in the world. It's one of the most powerful cities, not just in money, but symbolically. It is a city that the globalists are literally drooling over to get their hands on and to subjugate each and every one of you. COVID was just the beginning of that. 
It was designed to reprogram our minds in two special ways. Get rid of the idea of individual rights and freedoms and get rid of the idea that those freedoms are paramount to a successful society. And now they want to bring in the next phase of that agenda. And we know what it's called. It's called Agenda 2030. And that's why all their timelines say by 2030, this has to happen. By 2030, this has to happen. And if you let everything happen by 2030, not only are you not even going to recognize Canada anymore, you're definitely not going to want to live here. And what am I talking about? The 15 minute city agenda is the first layer of tyranny that they plan on bringing in through the government. They're going to tell you that it's all about climate change and equity and convenience and inclusion. In reality, those are all buzzwords for less freedom for you financially, mobility and otherwise, and more control for the government. And this has been going on, not just the last couple years, it just got accelerated in the last couple years. If we go around and talk to residents of Toronto, of different age groups, and you get to the seniors, they'll tell you 30 years ago, Toronto was better than it is now. The people a bit younger than them will say 20 years ago was better than it is now, but not as good as 30. And it slowly progressed to get worse to where we are today. It wasn't something that happened overnight, ladies and gentlemen. This would happen because of decades, decades of social apathy, where we just sat by and we allowed the political class to prop up these ridiculous candidates that we knew never had our interests at hearts, that we knew weren't qualified to do their job, but we had to vote for them because, you know, if you don't vote, you're not doing your part. It's been so rare that we've had a candidate actually represent the people that in the last election, 71% of the population decided not to vote. I was one of them. I've never voted in my life because none of those people ever represented me and I knew that my vote wouldn't really change anything. This is the first time in my life, and I'm not just saying it because I'm gonna be the representative, but this is the first time in my life that I believe that there's a representative of the people. Someone with the drive and the passion and the balls to stand up to the establishment. Somebody who keeps their promises. Somebody who knows how to run something efficiently and with fiscal responsibility. Somebody that cares about the city and the people living in it. That's what I have that these others lack. And somebody who's transparent and approachable and actually reachable. It's not an accident that my cell phone number is public. It's 416-400-9994. And people say, oh, you're crazy for giving out your number. Really? Why am I crazy for making myself accessible to the people that I'm supposed to be serving? Is that really a wild concept? For the last three years, I literally put my life on the line. I've been arrested 26 times. The most recent one was just a few days ago. My wife too. They arrested us both in the airport because they knew we were planning on coming here and doing this campaign. And then to make it even harder for us to come here, they arrested us for having the audacity of coming to the airport with a prepaid reservation and wanting to actually get on the plane and fly. According to them, that was crazy and extreme. And when my wife tried to document this, she was arrested for filming the police. And I was arrested for being filmed. Whatever that's supposed to mean. And to, yeah, and to make sure that we wouldn't be able to come here, or so they thought, they gave us a lifetime ban from Edmonton Airport. Yeah, we had to drive, we had to reschedule our flights and drive three hours to Calgary, drop my truck off with a friend, jump on a plane, and then fly an extra hour than it would have been from Edmonton just to get here. The day that I announced I was running, I got a message from the head of Elections Toronto basically threatening me and trying to intimidate me, telling me they're gonna to try to disqualify me, they're gonna investigate me, they're gonna to try to prosecute me and throw me in jail for six months. That my campaign is gonna be put under a microscope. They're gonna use selective enforcement to let other people cheat, the ones that they want to win, and to try to scrutinize every single thing we do. The day after that, I even got a message from, a, a letter from the Conservative Party of Canada. They were not too happy about me running, apparently. And I, thought, and I got through that. We even had our venue canceled on us for April 16th, our official fundraiser. But we got a new venue. 
So I know they're going to make it hard for me. But why are they doing that? I'm telling you this because a very special reason. Whether it's the COVID restrictions, whether it's the climate change restrictions, or whether it's my candidacy for mayor, the only way they can stop it, the only way they can stop me is if I quit. And the only way they can stop you is if you chose to put on that mask. If you choose to live in that 15 minute city, if you allow them to put on your carbon footprint, the moment we stand up for ourselves and the moment we refuse to quit, refuse to give in, we become a problem for them. And when a lot of you, like we see today, and I'm so happy and I feel so blessed to see this many people come out and support, but when we have this kind of support, we can bring corrupt governments to their knees. And that's what I represent. I represent that missile you're gonna launch into the establishment. I represent that fight against corruption. I represent the truth. And above all, I represent the people. When I get elected, the standard of living crisis, the cost of living crisis will be the number one priority on our list. And we have a massive 16 plus billion dollars in our budget. Billions, billions of that money is squandered yearly. And I tried to find out where. I went to all the different departments of the government and I tried to find their budgets. How many billions did you guys get? How many billions? It's not even available. We'll literally have to hire an entire team of forensic accountants to go through the last three years to figure out how many billions and billions and billions of dollars that could have been making every one of your lives better was stolen and squandered and disappeared into thin air and ended up into somebody else's pockets. There is so much resources in Toronto. It should have the highest standard of living and relatively low cost of living. But it's the complete opposite and it gets worse every year. And we're gonna fix that. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna battle corruption. You're gonna see resignations in my administration because anybody who goes against the fiscal responsibility that they are obligated to as a public servant should not be a public servant. You can't be serving the public when you're serving yourself at the same time. And I challenge any of the other candidates. They're going to do everything they can to try to make it so I can't get in those debates. Why? Because let's have all these candidates in the debate. Ask them to give them your phone number. Ask them to let you call them at 3 o'clock in the morning like I get calls every single day. Ask them any question about how they're going to make your life better. And you know what you're going to get? A rehearsed response that was written by somebody else. In our campaign, we're going to be going into every borough every day. And we're going to be asking the questions. How can we help you? And you're going to tell us. Because that's what a government's supposed to be. How can you represent the people if you don't even engage with the people? How can you engage with the people if you don't even get into their neighborhoods? These people aren't living with you. These people aren't living like you. These people don't care about you. Every single person in the government voted to extend the restrictions, voted to extend the lockdowns, voted to give themselves raises. While we were losing jobs, while we were losing homes, while we're getting fines for single moms sitting on park benches with their children, these people are going to their private gyms, eating their five-star dinners, flying on their private jets, and lecturing us on how we need to get used to having less and less and less, and trying to convince our children that the opportunities that were once available to all of us, like the simple idea of automobile ownership, are a relic of the past. Talk to an average 18-year-old today. When I was 16, I was already saving, doing everything I could to get my license. You talk to a 20 year old kid today, they laugh at you. Because they know they couldn't afford the payments, the insurance, the gas. And this is not by accident. Everything that's happening is intentional. It's by design. And we are enabling it. Because every year, you listen to the TV. And you say, look at the Toronto Star or the TV. These are the candidates that they say need to win. What a coincidence. Chris Guy's not any of, on any of their lists. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because they don't want change. Maybe it's because they want to give you the illusion of choice. And maybe it's because they want to put you in a situation that no matter who you vote for, 
your life's still going to get worse and their life's still going to get better. The reality of the situation is, for the last 30 years, every single year, the government has done less with more while trying to get the public to do more with less. And when I get elected, we're going to flip the script on that. And it's going to be another 30 years in the opposite direction. And our children are going to enjoy equal or better opportunity than I did. That is my pledge, and I pledge my life 